Welcome to part one of our Falling Object game tutorial. In this video we will be setting up our project and getting our play space all set up. We'll bring some sprites in that we can use for our game objects in our game here and uh, we will start looking at making the player move. So I've already created a brand new project in Unity. If you don't know how to do this, uh, when you first open Unity, you can just tell it to make a new project uh, and make it set up for 2D uh, presets, and you don't need to import anything in. So if you want to make a new project, uh, when you open Unity, you can just make a new project, or if you've already opened Unity like I am, you just say New Project. It's going to show you this screen. You would set for 2D, so this is going to be a 2D game. You'd change the name here to something like uh, Falling Object Game, and uh, you just hit Create Project. Okay, it'll take a few moments for Unity to do that, and when you're done, you'll end up in a empty scene here. Um, so we have our empty project here, and I've actually added a few things in here already, but this is basically an empty scene. Uh, it just has the camera in it. And then I've got this project overview uh, text that I showed you in the introduction video. And I set up just a, uh, a, an empty script for the player script. We'll get to that here in a minute. Uh, so we've got our project set up for 2D presets when we created it. Uh, first thing we need to do is bring in some sprites. So sprites are graphics in a 2D game. Uh, and uh, we can make those in all sorts of different kinds of drawing programs. We'll be talking about how to make our own sprites later on in, in the uh, course of all of this. So I've got some sprites already created here uh, for our 2D game, just some generic ones like you saw in the example in the last video that we'll be able to use, and later on you'll be creating your own sprites and theming this game uh, however you want it to be. All right. So um, to get the sprites into your game, you're going to drag the file uh, from your desktop and you're going to drop it. So I've dragged it over. I'm dropping it right here in my assets folder or right here in the assets part. If I drop that in there, um, it comes in. It's called Falling Object Sprites. Okay, if I click on it in the inspector, um, you'll see that it's got a texture type. You want to make sure that says Sprite. Um, sprite mode. Uh, is us telling the computer how many sprites are in this file. So you can either bring in sprites, uh, one file per sprite, or you can make what's called a sprite sheet, which I have here. You can see there's five different objects in this one sheet. So if that's the case, you want to change this to multiple. Multiple will allow us to go into this little file here and cut all these little pieces out individually and use them. Um, everything else you should be able to leave uh, the way they are right now. Uh, I'm going to hit apply down here and then I'm going to go to the sprite editor. So if I push this button I get the sprite editor um, and uh, this is what it looks like. It just shows me a picture of the file that we have here and it gives me some options here to do what's called slicing. So right here is the button that says slice. I'm going to click that. Um, be because of how this is set up I'm going to just tell it to automatically try to pick out the individual pieces. So it will look for the, the uh, visible pixels in here and it will try to put those all individual. We'll leave a center pivot point here and we can leave the delete existing the same. We'll just hit slice. Now when I did that, I'm going to click off here to get rid of that window. You'll see it put the white lines around my five objects here. So we can zoom in on that. Sprites are always going to be rectangular or square in shape. So uh, when you have an object that's circular or like these triangles here, you're going to get some empty space in there. That's why we make them on a transparent background so that that doesn't show up. But sprites are always going to be some sort of a rectangular square uh, in your game. So here's our objects, all five of them all selected individually. So since that looks good, I'm going to click the supply button right here. That will actually perform uh, the, the, the slice here where it actually has them divided up now and if I go down here in my project panel and I look at it and I open the arrow here you'll see now that it has each of these as their own individual object. 
So now I've got one sheet, but out of there I picked up five different individual unique sprites. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my game window here. All right, so the next thing we need to do is drag in our player object. And we're going to do this so we can start setting up um, the size of our play area. We have to kind of know what's appropriate here for giving us enough room to play this game in. So to bring in a sprite to the scene, you go into the project panel and you find the one you want. So I'm going to use this red uh, square. And you can either drag and drop it right up here in your hierarchy, or you can drag it right out here into the scene and you'll see... Uh, my camera's right here, so this is what my camera can see. So I'm just going to drop this down here towards the bottom of the screen because the player will be down towards the bottom of the screen in the game. Uh, and now this is the size of my player. Now that we have a, a player object in here, this is kind of our reference for what kind of a, 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 a play area size that we need. Um, so the next thing we're going to do now is we're going to go in and change some of our camera settings so we can set how big we want this uh, play area to be. This is going to be a game that takes place all on one screen. We're not doing any kind of scrolling or anything here. So we need to make sure that the amount of screen space we have to work in is large enough so that we can have enough time to see objects falling from the top and it's uh, challenging enough moving side to side, enough distance to cover to make it a little harder to get from one side to the other. So uh, to do that, we're going to go to our camera and in our camera, in the inspector, uh, we are going to check a few settings here. First of all, we want to make sure that our camera is at 0x and 0y. And it does need to be at a negative z value. So the negative 10z that the default 2D camera sets itself to is just fine. So negative 10z is fine. Um, the rotation should all be 0. This should be how it is when you created your project. If anything has been changed here, make sure you match it up. Down here in the camera section, uh, we want to make sure our projection mode is set to orthographic. Again, if you set up uh, 2D presets when you made this, it'll already be set. And then we have what's called size right here. The size is uh, the size of our camera's viewing area. So right now it's a 5. If I go here and make my size bigger, you'll notice how the uh, in the scene view here, the, the camera square, this is what the camera can see, how it gets larger. So this is kind of like zooming our camera in and out. See, so as I make it bigger, how my square gets smaller, because I'm actually seeing more space. If I go closer, it's like zooming in. All right, so this is how we're going to establish the size of our play area. So I'm going to put this out to something that looks good. I'm thinking somewhere around maybe a 15 or a 14 is a good size. And you can see now that in my scene view here, I've got a whole lot more area to work with. My player has gotten a little smaller in the uh, camera because I'm seeing more space with my camera. And this seems like there'd be enough time to see things falling down from the top. And there's a lot of room for my player to run around back and forth in here. So let's uh, move our player back down towards the bottom here. Let's see how that looks. He's going to be ending up somewhere down in here from we're playing. Uh, and so I think that looks pretty good. So again, your camera, go ahead and set your size somewhere around 15. Um, and as long as you've got all those other settings like we had before, everything in here should be just fine. So that's it for our camera setup. We've got a player sprite in here. And we've got our camera all set up and ready to go so our project is uh, is ready so uh, in the next video we'll be looking at how to uh, start adding some of the behaviors to our player how to make him move back and forth how to uh, either stop him at the edge of the screens or make him wrap around see you in the next video